little sneakers. <laughs> um, this is just a quick informal video. Um, this is very retro of me to have my desk here. I don't use it to make videos anymore because it's so cluttered and gross, but actually my reading table is cluttered and gross, so I thought I would do this instead. Um, so I just have three Marseille style, three Marseille decks that came in in the last few days slash weeks, and I thought I would just share them because I love them. Um, and I like sharing some Marseille goodness with you. Um, so the first one, I actually do not know where this came from. So this is a, so I got, it was sent to me and I do not know from who, um, but this is Tarot de Marseille 1760. It's a Los Scarabeo deck. And um, it's a limited edition by Los Scarabeo standards. Um, I don't know much about it. Um, it comes in these cool uh, boxes that Los Scarabeo was using these days. Um, and it is a Conver, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it's a Conver uh, reprint from 1760. Um, and uh, it's it's very it's cool um it's it's very much a a traditional reprint of a deck you know uh, and i think two of these are kind of reprints rather than restorations um but um it has that kind of messy quality that i like and some missing moments in the drawings and it's got you know just kind of a, a nice aged paper i don't love the backs I'm very picky about card backs, as we know. Um, but it's cool. It's not, it, you know, I, it, it hasn't blown me away, but I'm, I'm a fan of these decks that kind of look a bit like they might have looked when they were made um, with the hand, you know, hand carved and the inking. And uh, shuffles nicely, in fact. Um, it does sort of warn you that it's not laminated for shuffling, but actually it sort of does its job nicely. Um, so yeah, so it's cute, uh, cute. That's such a condescending word. It's nice. The cardstock feels nice. It's not, it's, it's, it says it's not laminated. It, it looks like it is, but it has like a, a good feel to it. It doesn't feel cheap or chintzy. Um, and uh, it's nice. Um, so that is this, and I do like these boxes that um, they, they've been using. I don't know that this is, oh yeah, this is, so it's a 2,999 uh, limited edition. I mean, that's not that limited, right? This is 2313. I'm always a little, you know, snarkalicious about stuff like that. Come on. But I do like, I do like this and I do like the box. I just don't like the back. Um, but yeah, Tower de Marseille, um, 1760. It is a riff or reprint of a Conver tarot. And Conver has become kind of the standard in many ways, um, the standard issue base for a lot of tarot decks, including Yodorovsky and Bendov. Now this, um, someone shared on the Tower Readers Academy, and I apologize for forgetting who it was because it was a minute ago. This is an Etsy deck from Endless Sky. I will try to remember the link um, in the description. But uh, yeah, someone who was taking my Marseille class. Oh, by the way, did I mention that I have a Marseille class on the Tower Readers Academy that you can still register for? And feedback has been very, very popular and powerful. Just gonna, you know, throw that in there. It is a, um, people are really enjoying it and they've gotten good readings out of it. So take my class. I'll leave a link to that below too. Probably will remember that one. So this I got off Etsy. Now this, I believe, actually came from Make Playing Cards um, rather than the seller. But this is another Conver, I believe. Is it a Conver? This might be a Noblet. I'll have to look. Either way, it's a, it, uh, um, do I have the? There was a title card that I have disposed of, I believe. 
which I'm notorious about doing. Yeah, I think it's maybe a noblet or a doe doll. I don't know. It's on the website. Anyway, it's <laughs> this is kind of a recoloring and reprinting with kind of a painterly digital uh, technique to it. And I got it because I'm just in love with these blues. I love them. They're really pretty blues. Um, and the backs are really pretty blues as well. How beautiful is that? So this was a spendy deck for, you know, um, a Marseille, um, and one made by May playing cards. But, you know, I, you know, we spend money on stuff. Um, so it's make playing cards stock. Uh, so if you're familiar with that, but the quality is really nice. I like it. It shuffles really nicely. Um, and it's a bit of a cleaner, gentler, less kind of um, rough and messy Marseille for folks who are maybe a little like, I want something traditional, but I'm not super into like the woodcuts. I wish it was a little more painterly and a little softer. Um, this has that going for it. And there are actually many variations on this artist's Etsy page. So there's one that I saw after I ordered this one, which I might have even gotten over this one, which has some lovely kind of pastels, but um, uh, but I do like this one a lot. So really, really pretty. Again, it's make playing card stock, so it's going to shuffle really nicely, and it's standard tarot size. So this is a keeper. Really pretty. Love the blues. You know, Marseille isn't known for its beautiful colors, but I think there are many decks out there that actually have that, even some older ones. And so that brings us to like the main reason I'm making this video is because this arrived today. Um, I've been drooling over many folks' videos um, of this deck. Obsidian Spirit uh, first showed me this and um, it is so freaking good. Y'all, I think this might become like a top three Marseille for me. Um, I'm kind of in love. I'm kind of obsessed. I'm kind of standing. Um, so this is a Yves Renault, Yves Renault deck. It is a reprint. Um, and it sounds like it's a, um, kind of a half reprint, half restoration. So it sounds like this was taken from two copies of the Francois Gassman, Gassman, um, a Swiss deck, um, and they sort of chose colors based on two different prints. Apparently there's some several extant copies in the, um, Swiss Game Museum in La Tour de Pietz, or Pietz in Switzerland. My French, my ancestors would be embarrassed. Um, but then again, I didn't grow up speaking French. I, so I only have one other, I have two other. I have the Millennium Edition of the Marseille, and then I have the Rocius, which is another sort of top, beautiful Marseille deck. Um, this one likely will get a fair amount of use because it's a bit smaller and it fits in my hands more, and I, more you know, I have small hands. Also, can we talk about the fucking back of these cards? This like Robin's Egg blue is so gorgeous. I just want to kiss it. I just want to lick it. I know. Um, I just, so the thing about this deck that got me were the greens. Look at that. So the greens in this deck are really unusual. And um, Cards and Colors just did, I think this was included. I think it was. A comparison of three Yves Renault Marseille decks um, and discussed how the coloration varies from each and it's very detailed so um, again I'll try to link that below oh my god so many things to remember um, they're literally post-it notes in front of me so let's be a grown-ass adult and say Add endless skies. Add Marseille class. Add cards and color to description. 
how, oh my God, fountain pens. Can we just for a moment, because I have them in front of me. So the, I love fountain pens. I don't write by hand much anymore. I have actually several in front of me. They're all by the same brand. Um, uh, these, this is my favorite brand of fountain pens. It's Twisby, I believe. Well, they're European. Um, this is a vacuum fill pen, um, which is super cool. Basically you sort of unscrew this base and you pull it out and you dip it into the ink bottle. And when you push the bottom in, it sucks all the ink into the, um, into the barrel. And, um, this is a great one if you ever fly because because of this it creates a seal here so actually when you're writing with it you need to kind of pull this out a little bit to let the ink flow into the the barrel of the the section they call it and then the nib but while you're flying it stops the air pressure from pushing ink out of the nib um, and then this is another twisby and this is um a piston filler you're getting a little fountain pen lesson um and this has one of the most gorgeous, let me see if I can catch this. Like a total digression in the middle of the video. Let's come back to the Gasman in a minute. Let's look at something super cool. All right. So this is um, beautiful, beautiful paper by Tamoe River from Japan. It is gorgeous, thin, creamy, delicious paper. Um, whoa. And it works really nicely for fountain pens because even though it's very thin, it doesn't have a lot of bleed through. Um, this is an ink called Emerald of Chavour. And I don't know, it may take a hot second to dry. Um, It is a beautiful uh, ink, and when it dries, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. One of the problems for me with fountain pens is that I'm left-handed, and that I have to be very thoughtful about how I write, because I will smudge it. Anyway, Emerald of Chavour is this gorgeous, I can actually show it to you. It's this gorgeous ink um, that is made by Gerbaum. And it comes in this gorgeous bottle. And I don't know if you can, you can probably see a little in the bottom, there's this sort of flex of gold in there. So the ink itself has this kind of chatoyant gold flex in it, but it also dries, if you write on sort of ink resistant paper, these beautiful um, tones, and you may not be able to see it here but it has like, it's a green ink, but it's got gold flecks and it has reds and purple um, uh, tones. And it's freaking beautiful. And this paper is gorgeous and that's that. And then this is another um, Twisby pen. I don't remember what ink I have in here. This I think is just a um, beautiful uh, copper. Uh, a dime mine, ancient copper is probably what this is. Um, another favorite ink of mine. Oh, and then while we're just talking about ink, this is my favorite all-purpose ink. This is um, Iroshizuku um, Kujaku. It's pilot ink, and it's a turquoise. Um, and uh, it shades beautifully. Uh, I'm not really, you know doing a very good job with my handwriting right now, but um, I'm also not used to signing Tom Benjamin because that's not my name. Um, anyway, super beautiful ink. It is my favorite, another beautiful bottle. Um, Mirt. Gorgeous. This is my favorite ink. It's produced by Pilot. It's Roshizuku. Kujaku is the shade. And um, it looks like a perfume bottle, doesn't it? Look at the gorgeous way that the like nib sort of indentation there. Oh my God, beautiful ink. Um, can you see the this, this, this sort of sparkly chatoyants in this? I can't tell. Anyway, that's a little brief, a little brief, uh, four hands of fountain pens. Um, but I have my note here so that I remember to do the thing. 
So anyway, yeah, the Gassman, the Francois Gassman 1840. I love this so much. The colors are gorgeous. The greens were what drew me, but actually the whole palette, and even the cards that are just red, blue, and white, I mean red, blue, and yellow, the primary color thing was always a turn off when it came to Tarot de Marseille for me, and yet I have seen past it. But there are many decks where even where the cards are, are just the primaries, there are shades and some greens and some beautiful, beautiful coloration. And um, oh, am I in love with this deck so much. And um, ah, so charming. I really, really think it's a badass deck. Um, I have number, let's see, this is a limited edition. I love that um, they send you a handwritten little note. Uh, this is a 157 out of 1500. Um, so I, I just am like swooning over this one. Uh, as soon as I saw it, I was like, I'm done buying Marseille decks. I have so many. Um, I, you know, as much as I love reading Marseille, when I do client readings a lot, I actually reach for Wade Smith style decks because I worry that clients will think that the reading doesn't look appealing, which is my own sort of latent bias at play, right? But people are going to get readings with this one. Now, these tend to be, these usually know decks tend to be a bit more collector's items than practical working decks. The cardstock is very sturdy and very thick. That doesn't lend necessarily to easy shuffling. This one shuffles quite nicely, I will say. And because it is small enough to fit in my hands, I can do something that is probably going to make people's gasp. But I can riffle this bad boy. And I'm all about a riffle shuffle because it mixes the cards up better. Um, so one of the things I love to do when I get a new deck is just lay things out in spreads of three and just see how they look together. Um, and this one looks very, very sexy. Um, so, yeah, if I had had this for my Marseille class, which you should take if you haven't, link below. Um, I would have used this one as well in there. How gorgeous is this Marseille? I mean, come the frick on. Obsessed. Obsessed with this one. So yeah, there's like a little look at some new Marseille decks in my collection, along with a brief foray into some fountain pens. Do I have any more fountain pens within reach? I do. Let's just look at these before we sign off, because why not? So this needs to be cleaned. This is another badass. Um, it's a retractable fountain pen. Um, and it uh, has a gold nib, actually, although it's plated. This uh, is a little bit of a finicky pen, uh, and cleaning it is a bit of a pain. So it needs to be cleaned. That's one thing about fountain pens that I'm very lazy about. But this is like super cool. I have two of these. Uh, one is just a pure matte black. I like this one a little bit more because the matte on some of the edges on the matte one has started to wear away. Um, this is a famous a German brand called Lamy, and I just loved this pumpkin color. This needs to be cleaned as well. I think I had that same ancient copper in it. This is like a great affordable fountain pen. Um, and it's very durable, it's aluminum, it's very sexy. I think this was a limited edition color. Um, but, and then my two most expensive fountain pens are made by an American pen company called Edison Pens. And they um, mill and manufacture all their pens, uh, I think in Ohio, potentially. Uh, and these are cool, these aren't my only ones, there's more around the house, but these are cool because they are uh, handmade. They are really comfortable to hold. Um, they're expensive because they're handmade, but you can also um, fill up the entire barrel with ink if you want to. I have what's called a cartridge converter in here. Um, see, it needs to be cleaned. So you can use this, which is like a piston that sucks ink into the barrel, but you can also use an eyedropper to fill this up and then you would put some silicone grease in there um, and uh, sort of seal it and um, it's beautiful. And then this is the same kind of pen with this, again, this sort of like gorgeous cat's eye chatoyance. The word of the day is chatoyance. Um, just beautiful handmade stuff. Um, and then this is a cool one. 
It definitely needs to be clean. This is a Caveco, a Kaweco. Um, it's a plastic pen and it's like a mini pocket pen. So you unscrew the cap when it's bumped like that. And then you post it, which is what you call putting the cap on the back of the pen. And you have something that's much more a writer's length. Um, this one, I, I feel, so you can get either ink cartridges for this one, or you can do an, what we call an eyedropper, which is you put ink in the barrel, you seal it with some silicone grease and you seal it up. This one um, had a tendency to leak. So I didn't, um, I didn't fill it correctly or seal it correctly. Um, so this also needs to be clean, but this is a great one that I used to throw in my um, traveler's notebook. Um, <laughs> we're getting into all kinds of things today. So like, if you know the traveler's notebooks, which I have not used this one, this was sort of my, what I used in grad school to kind of like get me through the work day. Um, and then I have these sort of, these are my favorite mass market pens. They're, um, Pilot Precise V5 RT. And uh, yeah, so I would um, do my like daily planning in here. Oh, um, some personal information we don't want to see. Um, we'll make sure to edit that out. <laughs> oh, I don't even have a functioning pen in front of me. <laughs> edit out PPI. <laughs> in case that showed up. It was actually old information, but still. So Traveler's Notebooks are these great things where they're all held together with elastic. Um, and then you can get these inserts. And actually this paper is Tomoe River paper. Uh, so I have my business cards. I have like stamps and a Starbucks card in there. I forgot I had those stamps. Not that I mail anything anywhere, but. So yeah, those are my playwriting business cards that my little sister designed for me. Um, so I used to put this in here. Um, but I don't really take notes on paper anymore because the world is such that digital notes are easier. What a weird video with unexpected turns and twists. It's like a season of a Ryan Murphy show, except this didn't get ridden off the rails um, in the last reel. But hope this was fun. Take care and take my Marseille class.